everybody. We're live streaming here on Facebook. I want to say I appreciate Pastor Brad for uh, doing a little prayer time and some worship. Great choice of songs and enjoyed seeing everybody pop up on the page. And we're just going to uh, linger here and wait a little bit as I know we'll have some folks joining us. And uh, while we're doing that, I think I can give a couple quick Announcements and updates, and my wife is going to come and, and share a little bit as well. So um, we just want to make sure everybody can get in on that. And uh, I do have a word I want to share. We won't spend a lot of time. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to join us and be a part of this. Um, we're grateful that the hurricane apparently is going to miss South Carolina, and so we rejoice with that. But uh, as was prayed about, uh, there are a lot of people in Florida that are about ready to get hit um, and so we want to be sure that we're lifting up uh, the people in Florida still pray for the people in Houston and um, let's be sure that uh, you know we just keep our eyes on those that are hurting we rejoice that uh, we're not going to experience what some thought but at the same time uh, let's let's uh, you know cry and and uh, be concerned about those who uh, may be losing everything. It kind of keeps it in perspective right now. I was thinking about, I'm going to talk about in a minute, our our uh, inconveniences and how our inconveniences kind of get us, you know, disheveled and upset. And then you think about people right now, uh, like in Marcos, St. Marcos or San Marcos Island, it's going to be under nine foot of water, they're predicting. And, and I, I was looking at the pictures in the Caribbean and it kind of keeps it all in perspective. So whatever inconvenience we may have, let's be sure that um, we're, 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 we're understanding ours is a whole lot less than a lot of people who are facing some really, really tragic situations. So it's great to see people joining. I think everybody's made the transfer, at least that I saw popped on the Legacy page. Glad you made it over here uh, to my page. Uh, welcome again. And uh, we don't want to burn up a lot of your morning today, but we feel like we have some things we want to share, want to connect with you, let you know what's going on. And uh, so I'm going to shift over here, and you're going to see Pastor T uh, become available. So we love you, and, and, and listen, Pastor T's coming on. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I just want to tell you thank you so much for your prayers and concern for our children. So let me just give you a quick update on them. Uh, Clay, Bethany, and Jude had already been in Atlanta visiting friends up there from Free Chapel. And so they have stayed up there. So they are safe. We're believing that even if it goes through Atlanta, uh, that they will be safe there. They're with friends. Uh, Tyler uh, did not was not able to get out of Jacksonville before the roads got so full. So he is staying at um, his girlfriend, Angie. Uh, her parents home with her and so he will be taken care of he is there in Jacksonville and then Kaylin had evacuated from Lakeland to her roommate uh, Greta Gilligan's home in Ocala Florida her parents pastor a great church there pastor Tim and Alicia Gilligan uh, Meadowbrook Church and so they have a Christian school and and everything there uh, Southeastern College uh, campus is there as well and so they are there, Kaylin's there, and unfortunately the storm now looks like it's headed that way. And so Pastor Alicia and I have been communicating and um, they have boarded up all the windows and they have food and she just posted that she has cooked and baked until she can't get anything more in the refrigerator. And um, so they are prepared. And so I just wanted to thank you all for the concern for my children. I know you love them all so much and that just means so much to Pastor and I. But I also wanted to say that you know, we came up to Spartanburg early because we had to be up here the, for the closing of my mother's house and moving our furniture out to get into our new home in Somerville this week. But, um, you know, God's ways are just amazing. And because we got here early, um, I was able to have a divine appointment with my niece, who has been going through a really difficult time. And she and I were able to just sit and I counseled her yesterday and just prayed with her and, you know, it was, just, it was just a precious time together that she and I had. And I just say, Lord, you know, you know exactly what you're doing. And that wouldn't have happened had we waited until, you know, the regular time to come, which would have been Sunday afternoon. So God is in charge of all of our steps. The steps of the righteous are truly ordered, and we have to believe that. But there are just a few thoughts that I wanted to share with you this morning about, um, about what we're going through. 
as I was talking to Kaylin on the phone, and she and I have been calling each other every few hours, and I'm sure in the next few hours as it begins to hit the Tampa area, we will be in contact even more. But um, as I was talking to her yesterday, I said, honey, you know, faith stories are not built. They're not written on the sunshine days. That our faith stories are written in the midst of the storm. And whether that be a literal storm like this, or whether it be a, an emotional storm, a financial storm, a health storm, a relational storm, um, we all want a testimony, but we very rarely want the test. And, um, you know, faith and trust are just concepts. They're just things that we learned about in Sunday school and pastor preaches about until we have to walk through them. And um, I will admit that yesterday when I realized that the storm was going to hit my baby girl, um, I shed a few tears. You know, and God is okay with that. He's okay with our emotions uh, being shared with him. Um, but the fact of the matter is we have to stand strong. So whether you're going through um, maybe not the, the, the hit in Charleston that we had ex expected, but whether you're going through any other kind of, kind of storm, financial, relational, health-wise, you know, God's okay if you cry. He's okay. And, and I realized the reason I cried as a mother is because I couldn't be in control. I couldn't be there with her. And somehow we feel like if we could be in the situation, if we could just take charge of the people, that everything would be okay. But, you know, even in my life, God is writing a new faith chapter for me. Pastor and I said two years ago that we wanted some new stories. And God is giving us one today with our daughter, Kaylin, and with Tyler down in Jacksonville. So, um, you know, Pastor has always taught us Proverbs 30, verse 5, which says, Every word of God will be tested. No matter whether it's a prophetic word, it's a written word, God's going to test the words. And so today the words faith and trust are being tested. You know, we all want a great and powerful testimony, but just like I said, we don't want the test that comes in making the testimony. So today I just want us to agree together and I want us to declare that we will be today a people of faith and trust. No matter what happens in Florida. No matter what happens in Georgia, no matter what happens in South Carolina, if we lose power, if we lose houses, you know, Pastor and I built this beautiful new house that was supposed to be in next Thursday. If half the thing gets blown away, if the shutters get blown off of whatever happens, God's got this. And I've got to just rest in that. Me getting all upset and in my southern terms, getting our panties in a wad, that ain't going to help anything. So we just have to trust in him. You know, the song that keeps going through my mind, and maybe many of yours, is in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. And I stop right there. What is our soul? Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Okay? He guards our mind, our thoughts. We can't let our thoughts go to, what if I lose it all? What if my child gets killed? We can't go there. We can't go there today. We have to... Put our emotions and our emotions in his hands. But then we also have to put our will. You see, whether it may not be this storm today, but in the storms of life, in the storms of our finances, in the storms of our relationships, we want to just take control. We want our will. We want our way. And we can't be that way. We have to release our will over to him. So it says, in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. And as I was talking to Pastor Alicia, which by the way, Pastor Alicia is an amazing woman. You think I am sanguine, she is more sanguine. And so they've been down there boarding up and cooking and playing games and going out in the yard and running around. They're doing all kinds of fun things. But Pastor Alicia and I are alike in so many ways. She grew up in the Church of God. And so a lot of the old songs that I know, she knows. And uh, so she was telling me yesterday that the song that she's standing on is peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. And so today, right before Pastor comes back, I just want to pray with us real quickly. Lord, I just ask that you would just let that peace sweep over us in fathomless billows of love. Lord, you love us. 
in the message I spoke not too many months ago on that we have to live loved, live like we're loved, walk like we're free. And Lord, today we choose to declare and to stand in faith and trust in you as people who live like we're loved. If you love us, which we know you do, your word says you do, then Lord, you only have good things for us. No, nothing will come to us that is not in your divine plan. And so Father, today, if we lose houses and lands, Lord, no matter what we lose, we trust in you and we know it's for good because you want only good for us. And so Lord, today, we thank you that our angels are on duty. We, we dispatch our ministering servants to stand around our children and our property and all of that. But Lord, ultimately, whatever happens, we know you're a good God and we trust you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Appreciate that. I know you guys love hearing from uh, Pastor T. And uh, that was great. That was on point, and we appreciate that so very, very much. Hey, um, I just wanted to share a couple of things as uh, we're gathered here this morning. Again, grateful that uh, it appears everything's going to be good. Um, we still need to pray that there's minimal rains and things like that because of the area uh, that our church is located in and that all our people stay safe. But I wanted to share just a little bit because of the hurricane issues. Um, you know, you have Irma that's coming through, and then you have o Jose spinning around out there. I was watching uh, the trajectory for that, and it looks like it, it, it's doing a, a circle and then uh, could possibly be aimed right back at us. And so to think that we've been paralyzed by one storm and then potentially have another storm uh, come through, it's, it's almost inconceivable. Nobody wants to think that. And uh, there are a couple uh, passages that were brought to my attention that I think are, are really good. And uh, so if you, if you have your Bibles, I'm eventually going to get to Matthew chapter 8 here in just a moment. So if you want to find Matthew chapter 8, I'll be reading uh, some uh, scripture from there. But Jesus said in Matthew 5 that it rains on both the just and the unjust. Uh, in other words, all of us are going to face rainstorms, whether we're righteous whether, whether we don't want anything to do with God, it, it, it rains on us all. It rains on both the just and the unjust. And it tells me that, number one, is nobody's insulated from adversity. So just because we follow the Lord, love the Lord, and uh, you know we're walking with Him, it does not mean we're going to be insulated from adversity. Whether it's our kids who are right now hunkered down in Florida, waiting for the storm to pass by, or whether it's your life and things are going on. Uh, relationally, financially, they're challenging. Uh, we all face storms, and nobody's going to be insulated from that. And if you, if you thought signing up for the journey with Jesus meant you're going to be insulated from everything, that simply isn't the case, which we're going to read here in just a moment. And then sometimes it feels like, secondly, the just uh, get hit even more <laughs> than the unjust. It seems like sometimes, if you are following with the Lord, that it feels like uh, you're getting hit even more than other people. And I just want to remind you that sometimes it feels that way. Number one is because we're the group that carries light. We're the ones that are pressing into darkness. Uh, we're the ones that are contending and challenging uh, the fruit of darkness and evil. And so, you know, we find ourselves on the tip of some spears uh, with regards to cultural things. And we find ourselves in challenging situations. The enemy's real. Uh, there are times that he... Uh, he will backlash at us, and there are things that can happen that we find ourselves in, in a legitimate spot of more adversity than perhaps our neighbors next door who seem not to care much about the things of God. And so um, keep that in mind. Sometimes we are hit a little bit more. And uh, the second thing, though, in that the reason we feel hit more is because I think storms are great, uh, what I call Petri dishes. You remember in science, uh, probably there was a year that you had a Petri dish and you put some bacteria or something in it, and then you closed it up, and you waited. And the Petri dish has certain elements in it that causes whatever you put in it to grow and manifest and, uh, you know, to uh, whatever was growing to take place more swiftly. Well, storms are great Petri dishes for Christians to grow in. We get thrown in this hostile environment or this storm environment, 
And, and this is a great environment for us to grow in. Pastor T was absolutely on target when she said that you can't have a test without a testimony. And you aren't going to have a message without facing some messes. And you're going to be in a storm in order to enlarge you and to grow your faith. And so uh, this storm, as real as it is and as concerning as it is, uh, is really a great time practically to be able to understand how God uses these storm moments in order to enlarge us and to grow us. Now, I just want to say thanks uh, to Pastor Manning Strickland. He, he always gets on the front end of these things because he had cranked out this outline uh, swiftly and put it out of there on Facebook. And he actually said, hey, you pastors who are uh, evacuating and doing things like that, here, use this. It might help you. So uh, while I'm not using his exact outline, I have to give some credit where credit is due that... Uh, he had some great thoughts that I'm going to hijack. Every pastor hijacks a little bit. I'm going to hijack a few of those thoughts, and I want to share them with you uh, with regards to the storm. I'm going to read out of Matthew chapter 8 here in just a moment, but bear with me. I want to tell you a quick story. Uh, some of you may have seen the movie with Denzel Washington, and um, uh, who, who's the other guy with Denzel? Gene Hackman uh, in, in Crimson Tide when they were naval officers. And they were in a nuclear-powered submarine. And uh, the story, the general story, is they go into a moment where they're not sure whether they're to launch their nuclear missiles or not. And the whole story revolves around uh, the tension and the adversity the uh, captain and the executive officer had with each other. Prior to that order and the confusion that existed, there was a fire that took place on that sub. And in the midst of the fire, the captain decides he's going to run a drill in order to see if all the seamen on the sub are prepared to do what they're supposed to do in the midst of this chaos and anarchy of a fire. And some people were severely injured, and, and it caused, again, this tension to exist between the captain and the executive officer. And uh, the executive officer didn't think he should call uh, a drill in the middle of an adverse situation. It just caused... Uh, the potentiality of harm. And so they have this discussion and the captain eventually looks at Denzel and he says that this is the exact moment to run a drill is when you're in the middle of an adversity because it is then that the crew grows, it enlarges, it matures, and it begins to understand focus and what it means uh, to rely on their discipline in that particular moment. That's exactly the scene that's being played out for us at Legacy and maybe be, uh, may be playing out for you as an individual. Right now, uh, Legacy is facing, really, uh, a challenging season. Now, there are a lot of great things going on that we'll point to, uh, but we've had our challenges, and that's no deep, dark secret. Uh, but as we're being challenged, we're transitioning. Think about this. We're transitioning uh, from a previous location into a new location. We're transitioning from one particular time of the day into a new time of the day. We're transitioning one facility to a new facility. So we're moving a whole church. We're renovating. We're cleaning. Uh, all the things you do to get ready, we were hoping to be ready today, at least uh, for the family to gather, the family of Legacy to gather. And uh, all of that was stressful. We were trying to get chairs and painting and and cleaning and, and sound systems and, and things ran and, and all that is super, super challenging. Now, add on top of that, that uh, our mother, my mother-in-law's house was fixing to close. We were trying to get all of our furniture out of here, which has been stored, in order to get it moved down the road, in order to get set up because uh, the mortgage banker decided they wanted to close the same week we were doing all these other transitions. We didn't have any choice in that. And so so we're trying to get our furniture out of one house that somebody wants to enter in order to get our furniture into another house that we want to get settled in and then drop a hurricane into that whole mix. And so you're, you're prepping now. You're prepping yourself and your houses. You're prepping a church, a brand new church for flood, for evacuation. Uh, I was up on the roof during a torrential rain over at the church digging out stuff out of gutters in order that there wouldn't uh, you know, be more backup of water. And you're prepping all of these things. You're losing your first Sunday. I've got a daughter in Ocala who's you know, in the crosshairs of a hurricane as well as my other kids. 
And so why, why God, when I have all of these things going on, would you decide like the captain on that nuclear submarine decide to drop this drill on me at this particular moment? Why? It's because this is the perfect moment for us to grow, for us to enlarge, for us to trust, for us to build our faith. This is the perfect moment for all those things to happen. Now, is it fun? No. Is it stressful? Undoubtedly. But it's, we're being enlarged for some purposes, and it's exactly the reason why God does these things in yours in my life. It's because it's the only moment. If we're just sailing along on a cruise ship, yep. and everything's good and perfect, and somebody's feeding us meals, and they're making our beds for us, and everything's just a delight, and you think you're going to enlarge your faith, I don't know what Bible you've been reading. Adversity comes, challenge comes in order to enlarge us. And if you can understand that and you can embrace that and participate in it, you're going to find yourself to be a much stronger believer and person on the backside of those things. So I promised I would read to you out of Matthew chapter 8. Now, all of my technology guys are, are not available. We're not in sanctuary. We're not in anything like that. So I said, how can I make this as closely relatable to what we do in church service uh, as possible for those that are tuned in or those that may watch later. Well, this way. For Number one is this first slide. I hope you can read this because it looks backwards on my screen, but it's lessons from a storm. Lessons from a storm. That's the first slide, all right? And then I want you to turn to Matthew <laughs> chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Is that coming in backwards? Somebody, somebody, uh, who's on live stream right now. Tell me if that's forward or backwards. I think it's forward. Uh, but hopefully hopefully you're seeing it uh, in, in, a, in a right way. So anyway, Matthew 8, 23 through 27. It's, it's charging, babe, right there on the thing. All right? If you have your Bibles, listen to me real quick. It says, Now when he, meaning the Lord, got into a boat. Oh, Ted Durant just told me it was backwards. Oh, well. <laughs> we're, we're, we're ministering to dyslexic people here today. <laughs> so if you have a dyslexic friend, tell them to tune in and uh, we're going to be able to help them very, very much. I probably offended somebody by saying that. But uh, nonetheless, got to keep a sense of humor. Everybody's posting in now that it's backwards. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we're still going to have fun with it, whether it's frontwards or backwards. All right. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. Now, when he, meaning the Lord, got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he, meaning the Lord, was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Amen. Uh, lessons we can learn in a storm. Bless you, Dot Glover. Uh, she says we can read it backwards and upside down. And Lauren Poe says everybody get their mirrors out. All right. So, all right, we're going to have fun with this. All right. Lessons from a storm. I want you to get this now. Lessons from a storm. Number one is this. I don't know whether I should keep doing this or not. Yeah, don't do ah, my wife says don't do it. All right. Lesson number one is this. Jesus, it says here in the scripture, leads us into storms. That's right. He got in a boat. In fact, if you'll read one of the other passages, it says that uh, God, uh, the Lord, actually called his disciples and put them in a boat knowing full well they were going to head out to a storm. So hear me. Jesus leads us into storms. In fact, the scripture in the Old Testament said that the Spirit of the Lord led the children of Israel into the wilderness. And Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. God leads us into things like this. He doesn't lead it for our destruction. God's not out to destroy you. He's out to enlarge you. He's out to grow you. He understands when you face these adversities and these challenges. Some of this for us is just a mere inconvenience. Listen, those of us in South Carolina, in, uh, this storm looks to be passing us by. So we're not losing houses. If, if we get some rainwater, we'll, we'll you know, suck it all up and get rid of it. But there are some people in Houston and in Florida that are going to lose everything. Yes. So keep this in context. And even in losing everything, those are, are grounds for miraculous moments. Amen. And uh, grounds for us to be compassionate. So 
Keep that in mind. Jesus leads us in order to, to strengthen us. You've heard the old saying, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. That's right. Well, that's true. Yeah, whatever doesn't take you out is there to enlarge you and to help you. So that's number one. Jesus leads us into storms. Number two is this. According to the scripture, you're not the only one in the storm. Think about that. You're not the only one going through the storm. There are other people that are going to be in the boat. There are other people who are going to be riding this thing out. There are other people who are facing their challenges. You are not the only one in the storm. Sometimes storms make us very self-consumed. Sometimes storms make us forget that, that there are other people facing challenges around us. My wife posted a wonderful post about a guy in a wheelchair at the Bilo who had no legs. And we walked by and we were talking about all the stresses that were going on in our life. And he was trying to get his wheelchair in the car himself. And I, I offered to help, but he said, no, I've got it. I've done this. And so we went on and we looked at each other. And I don't know who said it first, but we looked at each other and said, we just need to keep our stresses in context. And that's what I'm saying to you. Even legacy, listen to me, legacy folk. Hey, we've got some stresses and some challenges, but we're not a church in Florida right now in uh, Tampa or St. Pete, or you go down the coast, all right? These churches are going to have some really, really significant challenges. So remember, we're not the ones in the storm or the only ones. We've got others that are facing some massive challenges. Number three is this. Number three is whenever you're in a storm, it always feels like things are out of control. That's how it feels, doesn't it? Now, the disciples were in a boat out in the middle of a storm, and it feels like, if you're in a storm, I'm not in control. But how many of you know who's in the boat? Jesus, Jesus is in the boat. What feels out of control, ultimately, he's got. And we need to remember that. It may seem out of control, but the fact of the matter is, Jesus has this. Uh, the Lord has this. And um, I, I just believe in a sovereign God. I believe he overshadows everything. I, I believe that uh, our steps are ordered. I believe that he's, he, he can move storms with his hand. We can answer all the philosophical, theological questions later. But I believe the Lord has this and that he can bring about great good out of it. He can, he can speak to us out of it. He's not beyond telling us some things in America with regards to our thumbing our nose at him. And so I believe that God's got this and that his people have never been seen begging for bread, that uh, his people will not know lack, and that even in the midst of great challenge, uh, that his people will come uh, through this uh, refined and pure as gold. So things appear out of control, but they're really not. Number four, how about this? When you're in a storm, how many of you think God's asleep? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever been in a challenge? And you said, hey, where's the Lord in all of this? Where's God in all of this? I mean, God, Lord, are you asleep somewhere? Are you, are you somehow disconnected from my reality? Are you, are you taking a nap on this one? Can't you see that there's this storm raging all around us? I, I almost hate to admit it, but, but this week when we were getting uh, our new location all pulled together and we were putting paint on the wall and getting everything set up, and all of a sudden uh, the... Uh, uh, the weather uh, predictions were coming out and we were talking about what happens if this place floods and we just put paint on this wall and, and you feel like, Lord, I mean, we've had enough challenges. I don't want to fight you in this thing. Um, can't you do something to help us out here? We're just, we're trying to worship you. We're trying to, to build a ministry. We're trying to do something to make your name great. And it seems like you're not helping us here. And so it feels like God somehow is asleep in situations like this, but I tell you, uh, we can awaken him. We can say, hey, Lord, help us out here. And, and he awakens and he helps us and he can help sustain us and see us through. He doesn't hear me when I say this. He didn't, he didn't stop instantly this storm from happening. He led these disciples into the storm. They faced the storm. They felt the sea on their face. They they rode the waves. They were in the middle of the wind. And and he had the ability and he did. Jesus got up and he spoke to it and it ceased. But it ceased when he spoke to it and determined it was going to cease. And and we need to understand that we're going to ride some things out till God says, the Lord says, it's enough 
and then he stops it. And so remember that, that he's not asleep during your storm. Number five is this, your faith will be enlarged during this storm. That's what he looked at the disciples in the boat and he said, he goes, what, what's going on here? He says, why are you fearful of you, O oh, you of little faith? How would they have known that they were of little faith unless the storm had come their way? How would they have known? Why are you fearful of you of little faith? Listen, I, I, I'm not, I've decided no fear, no stress, no anxiety. God has this. In fact, I'll just look at legacy folks and I'll tell you this. We've, we've, got, we've got our challenges, but they're going to be people that are far more challenged than we are. And we're going to do our best to get our eyes focused on those who are way more challenged than we are. There are still people in Houston. There, there are going to be people in Florida. There are going to be churches that are decimated. There are going to be people that need our compassion. And, and so while we have our own needs and resource needs, we're going to make sure that our eyes are looking to those who are in a far more challenging position than we are because you know what if we do things like that God will take care of our needs so we're going to be sensitized to all of this and you need to realize this is going to be the moment for the body of Christ to ask the Lord hey Lord uh, of my money what money's marked I've got to get this to people to recover in Houston people to recover up and down the coast in Florida and I've got my own church that's looking to do some things in the Charleston area listen it's 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 an honor to be tapped by the Lord, uh, to be able to say, I am here for great kingdom purposes. And so we're going to make sure that our eyes aren't just focused on, on our little corner, but we're going to be focused on others who have great needs as well. And so your faith is going to have to be enlarged during this storm. Uh, we can't shrink back. We've got to be able to go forward. So let them enlarge you. You're going to need to believe God. You're going to have to sow. I'm going to sow. We're all going to sow. And uh, we're going to help and we're going to give and we're going to do it generously and hilariously. And, and God's going to do some great things as we help others outside of our scope of influence, as well as doing what we need to continue to do where God has planted us. And then number six is this. This is the great thing. If you'll read this passage in all of, uh, of the gospel accounts, it says this clearly, those disciples got to the other side. In other words, you will get through your storm, <laughs> whatever it is, whether it be Hurricane Irma, Jose, whether it be your personal storms of relationship, uh, again, of resource, of challenges, you're at your job, Things aren't shaking right. You're in the middle of a storm. There's family upheaval. Hear me when I say this. You will get to the other side. We will get to the other side. And uh, we need to keep that in mind. And uh, it's not easy going through up and down the waves and hitting the wind and all the things that are going on right now. But all of that is taking us to the other side. And most people don't realize that when this boat got to the other side, uh, I, I believe, and I hadn't had time to study it out real well, but I believe that was the, uh, the Gadarene demoniac, and Jesus did this incredible miracle. First thing when that boat got to the other side, listen to me, when your boat gets to the other side, the Lord will begin to do some incredible miracles, some ministry miracles, some amazing things that can begin to happen. Listen, I've been saying all through this, Romans 8, 28, that God will cause all things all things to work together. He will cause it to work together for good. Only two requirements. To those who love him. And number two, those who are called according to his purpose. And if you can say with me right now, I love, I love the Lord. And I know I'm called according to his purpose. Then he's going to take all of this together. And if I'm speaking to some that are in the Florida or Houston region. And I understand you, you are facing some things that look insurmountable at the moment. And uh, people have rushed to Houston. They'll continue to move that direction. And they're going to move to Florida and continue to move to Florida and help the Floridians. But hear me when I say this. Let God enlarge you. Believe that the Lord can do miracles. And when you begin to believe and see his hand in these moments, it will encourage you. It will enlarge you. It, it will amaze you. Uh, people, people will come from all different directions in order to, uh, 
to help get you through this time. So uh, this was just really just a short moment to give a devotional. In fact, I just saw my daughter popped on Thanks right Dr. there. Girl. And uh, nice so, Kaylin, God bless you. I'm going to let your mom stick her head in here. We're wrapping up our time together, but, but because Kaylin's on right now, this is our opportunity to, to say hey to her. Yeah, and I just spoke to Kaylin and prayed with her. And I just want to uh, share what I shared with her with all of you. You know, when, we, when I uh, quoted that song, uh, that he's he he's alone as our anchor and 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 of our of our will our our soul our mind our will our emotions that during this time of testing in these next couple of days don't let your soul get out of control don't let the enemy win by the things that you say the things that you do in frustration in a crowded situation some of those people that we know are going to be in shelters how inconvenient to have to sleep on a cot and be around people that you don't know i mean that's inconvenient i don't even a sanguine like me wouldn't do very well in that kind of situation but the thing is the enemy wants us to lose our cool he wants us to lose our patience he wants us to be critical fault finding and when we do that we lose our testimony and so um, as I prayed with her that, you know, we're going to get through this. These next two days, everything up to today has been preparation. The test starts today. Right now is the test. And we're going to pass this test and we're going to come out with flying colors. But we have to choose by our will to make a decision to take control of every thought, every word that proceeds out of our mouth. We've got to take control Amen. and let the Lord be the Lord of all. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's a good word. That's a good conclusion. Hey, I'm not signing off quite yet. Just a couple quick announcements before I let you all go. Thanks for hopping on. It looks like we had a good group watch live. As you know, when you post these videos, they'll hang on there for a long time so you can share it around. Uh, that crazy video I did in the car with the dogs and going down the road has reached, I think it's upwards to close to 700 views. That's just remarkable to me. Why you would want to watch that is beyond me. But nonetheless, <laughs> it, it is true. But hear me real quick uh, on just a couple of quick items. This coming week, I'm here in Spartanburg. This is my week that I'm moving all this furniture down so we can finally and with great joy settle and relocate our situation back again in the Charleston area. And so I'm going to have to be doing that on the front end of the week. Pastor Brad is going to be working. He's going to be going over to the church, making sure that uh, everything can begin to be in order. Now, he may be calling uh, some folks to help move. we got some chairs to move, some things to move. Need some guys with some arms to move chairs back into place. Because uh, I'm not going to be able to jump back on it. And Pastor T's not going to jump back in on it, probably till till the end of the week. Right. So if Pastor Brad asks for help, I, I'm, 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 I'm asking you to respond to him like you'd respond to me. Because we need, this is one of those moments that, that we're going to be going different directions. I need you to respond to him just like you'd respond to me. And listen, it's stressful, I know. Everybody's trying to do their best because uh, a week from today, we're all going to gather up in that brand new facility as a family. It's not, it's not our grand opening yet, but we're going to gather up. Everything probably won't be in perfect place yet. But we're going to gather up and we're going to rejoice and say, wasn't that an amazing two weeks? And uh, we're going to see what God can do by way of victories. And we're going to sing our lungs out and worship our hearts out and, and hear what God has to say. And so I need you uh, to find time. I realize most of you are going to work. Some of us will be traveling back on the roads because we did evacuate. There's going to be just a lot of upheaval. But that word my wife just gave about watch your attitude, watch what you say. Don't let stress and anxiety cause you to say things to your brother or your sister that would make you feel like, uh, you know, they, they can be the brunt of your frustrations. Let's, let's, let's not do that, okay? God's got it. Let's just roll with it, flow with it. Uh, whatever situation you've got, I guarantee you there are people right now in a far worse situation than you. And, and let's not think that they have a far better attitude <laughs> than ours because let me tell you something, that would be, that would be an indictment. So... We're going to keep our joy, keep our smiles, and we're going to do what we can do. And uh, we're going to believe God in the outcomes. But remember, this Sunday, now September the 17th, one week from today, we will be gathering at the Bees Ferry site. 1945 Bees Ferry, that is the new home for Legacy Church. We want you to be there. Again, pulling things together, 
Uh, and we love you guys, and thanks for tuning in today. Sweetheart, anything left that we, we may need, she just cast in her love towards you guys. We can stay uh, connected. Uh, we'll probably make a couple more uh, live videos letting you know what's going on. As soon as we're off, if you need to share this with someone that wasn't there, please, please do that. And uh, uh, we want, we want uh, you to be blessed and helped. I'm going to pray before we go. And I want you to agree with me right now as we pray. And I see some people are kicking on live now. And we're glad you're here. Uh, we're about ready to conclude this. And so as soon as we're done, you can watch it again. It'll remain posted. So please take the time uh, to watch it again. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be talking to you soon. If you need me, you know all my social media addresses. All right? Uh, again, let's pray. Father, thank you right now. Uh, for all the folks that were able to join live, I know some some were joining uh, late. Lord, I pray that you just uh, let them watch what all was going on. I pray, Lord, that you would overshadow us all. Some people will be traveling that evacuated. I pray for traveling mercies with regards to their situations. Lord, I pray for those that remained. I pray for uh, the people again in Florida, my daughter, the Gilligans. We thank you for their lives. We bless them and their generosities. Uh, to help her as she shelters there. Lord, protect his church. Protect Pastor Tim's church. Protect their home. Protect their people, I pray. So especially, Lord, we know Joe, Pastor Joe's down in Orlando. We ask that you'd overshadow those people, that church as well. Lord, Freedom Fellowship. Uh, Lord, we just pray that your hand would be seen amongst your people. We don't want anyone to be hurt. Uh, but Lord, we just pray that somehow your name would be made great amongst your people. And that, Lord, you would see to those things rightly. We pray, Lord, for this coming week. Pray for Pastor Brad because he's going to be carrying some things. I just can't be there, Lord. And, and I pray that you just give him broad shoulders uh, and help him with what he needs to do. We're learning what teamwork means. So, Lord, help us in that regard as well. Bless our people. Those that could be on, those that perhaps could not be on, Lord, bless our people. I pray for Legacy Church today. Lord, that all of our people would be safe, they'd be unharmed. Lord, that even in the midst of a storm, that you'd even enlarge them, that you're growing us up, you're causing us to be a hearty, faith-filled people. So Lord, we submit to those processes and glad that when we come out on the other end, some miracles are going to take place. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for Kaylin and Tyler and Clayton and Bethany and Jude. Thank you for all the grandkids and the kids from all of our legacy parents. Parents right now, pray for your kids. Just bless them right now. Thank you for them right now. All of them, I pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, we love you with everything we've got. And uh, that's our highest priority. And the second one is we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves. And if we can get that right, we've got a lot of it going on right. So, Lord, again, we honor you. We're making your name great. May we be another point of light in all of this, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you guys. And uh, again, we're going to stay in contact. We love you. We love you. We love you. I wish I could see all the names. Priscilla, I love you. I feel like the lady in the old romper room who's yeah. seeing all these people. Uh, D, Twyla. Deborah Poe. Deborah Poe's on there. Hey, my mom's on there. God bless you, mom. Glad you jumped on. Jim Donnelly. James. Come on, man. I need I need some arms, some man arms over. So I hope Katrina you come on. Jimmy. Katrina and Jimmy are on there. God bless you guys. Hey, Jimmy brought over some wonderful food uh, the other day. He had to stay at work, but Pastor he brought Jan. the food. Uh, Pastor Jan's on there. Love you, Pastor Jan. Pastor Fred, we love you. Lisa Stone is on there. I'm sure Brian is as well. God bless you. Dot, God bless you. I'm going to miss somebody now that I started Thank all of this. Thank you, Kenny from Pittsburgh, who now lives in Ocala. Kenny. He goes to Meadowbrook Church. Yay. Pastor Tim Gilligan. All right, Kenny. God bless you. Saw Drew was on there. Friend, Pastor friend from Charleston, Drew. God bless you. Dan Bearden. He's my tech man. All right. Jim DeCamp from Indiana. Stephen Bush, Freedom Fellowship folks. Hey, guys down there. We love you. For you. We love you. Praying for you. Weather the storm. Shauna. And Shauna, she's on there. Really God bless you. That means Jamie's probably on there too. Okay, Monica Hamlet. All Teresa, right. Teresa Knox. Uh, Alvaro. God bless. God bless. God bless. All right. All right. I'm, if I'm not getting you all, 
God knows we love you. We love you. We love you. I'm just I'm looking through Micah's on there. Beverly's on there. Hey, Brad, what are you doing on there? All right, Brad's on there. I would have, I would have expected Brad to be on there. Mike Deborah and Nancy and Abinette. And Andrew, hey, we love Dan you guys. See, this is like the lady on that romper room. Remember when she looked through there? I see. I need this circle that says, I see you. I see you. All right. Anyway, it's good to have a little fun in the midst of a storm, isn't it? All right? Ride the waves. We love you guys. Love you. Love you, love you, love you. See God you bless. See you soon. All right, we're signing off. God bless. Release the